नमस्ते सुस्वागतम फ्रेंड्स अक्रॉस द ग्लोब टू आ विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम प्रोग्राम वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम ज्ञान गंगा विच वी हैव एवरी संडे एट एट पी एम इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड टाइम एंड वी हैव अनदर प्रोग्राम टूडे द हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट एपिसोड इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड And we have with us along with Dr. Sumanthi Pandey, our guest, Ajit Ayer, who will be discussing the situation, India's national interest and situation in Ukraine. Ajit Ayer is a senior fellow at the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies, a defense economist, pursuing his PhD in war studies from King's College, London. Economist has regular columns in numerous newspapers in India and abroad, and it is a great pleasure to have him with us discussing this topic with Dr. Swami. Our last Sunday episode on the Hindu Tour under siege today is Hindu Tour under siege today. We had a viewership of over seventy-nine thousand viewers across the globe. I thank our technical team led by Ashish Shetty. Tejas Naval Gol, Swami Nathan, Rakesh Gargi, Ishwar Iyer, Ajay Nair, Ajay Nair, and Vishal Mehta, and my co-host, Mr. Dr. Arvind Chaturvedi from Delhi, and my other host, co-host Ramesh Swami, is tied up somewhere else in the deep south, so he will not be able to join our program. So this this opening remark is over to Dr. Swami to initiate today's discussion. And let us go the reality of the situation in Ukraine and what is in India's national interest. Over to Dr. Swami. Let us go the reality of the situation in Ukraine and what is in India's national interest. Over to Dr. Swami. Let us go the reality of the situation in Ukraine and what is in India's national interest. Over to Dr. Swami. Let us go the reality of the situation in Ukraine and what is in India's national interest. Ah, there is an echo, no? Yeah. Yeah, there's a big echo. Yeah, it's talking. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Jagdish, uh, for this uh, uh, very good, appropriate occasion in considering what's happening in the world. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, someone who's now acknowledged as an expert. Uh, he doesn't have to flaunt his degrees or his Uh, publications, uh, but he is uh, widely known. He is uh, not only appears on television, uh, YouTube's, and so on, but he also is a prolific writer. So, uh, welcome to Abhijit. Um, we, uh, we, I'm not sure whether we will agree with you or not agree with you because uh, my last discussion with you, I thought. Uh, I am on the, not on the same uh, same page. Uh, for instance, you had said that uh, the Russians uh, will take over the country and uh, appoint a new president by fr Friday, um, but it's not happened. Something new. So the, you'll have to explain uh, why, where, where, what was the variable that you didn't allow for, uh, and uh, this happened. But that doesn't mean that you are uh, not. We, we don't hold you in very high esteem as a man of learning, as a man dedicated to the subject. Uh, so we all want to hear now. Basically, we, I will begin by just a five-minute introduction on the subject, as far, from my perspective, and then, uh, as per your perspective, put it across, and then later on we will have in, uh, exchange. Uh, The two elements of the topic that we announced: one is na India's national interest, and the other is situation in Ukraine. As far as our national interests are concerned, uh, I will say broadly speaking, India should uh, work within uh, four dimensions. One is that it must defend de democracy. Otherwise, uh, you know, what is if you are uh, if you are with dictatorship? And democracies, you can't make a distinction between the two. Uh, then it's very bad for uh, for India's image. Uh, and I uh, I would certainly say in this particular example, uh, Ukraine was a flourishing democracy. Uh, they may have uh, some upheavals. Some one president had to be driven away by a mob by, by a mob, 
but the, but they still they have elections and today somebody is being elected who a young person who is uh, is now shown himself to be a man of great courage and uh, i think therefore uh, it was our uh, india should have been much more forthcoming i'm not saying india must underwrite everything the democracy say the united states is a democracy but there are so many things they do we don't agree with and they also don't agree with us by democracy of course we have to uh, just say, but i would say that all we seem to be doing is evacuation we did in afghanistan uh, we did in iraq uh, we are now doing it in uh, in uh, ukraine uh, so they, we don't seem to have our national interest worked into any kind of policy it's just uh, uh, you know save uh, you know save your people who have gone there on their own free will uh, to study and to earn and to work and so on so i think uh, one of the things i would like to say is that it was in our national interest in the name of democracy to have uh, supported uh, maybe lukewarm but supported uh, and voted with those who wanted to censure russia in the UN, united nations security council and we got now another chance now with the un general assembly and i hope we revise our stand and support uh, in the ukraine and for its freedom and its uh, not being bullied by uh, by the by the russians or anybody else the second thing is uh, we have to play a clear uh, international role india because we are in quad which has america in it and we are also in brics now you can't be in both i don't understand uh, how we can be in both and uh, maybe uh, abhijit understands and uh, because he has got lots of friends in the government also and so he could uh, perhaps uh, inform us how how you can be both and uh, and what is more important which which should be we be i mean if somebody says no no we should be part of brics not quad that's a point of view i mean i can respect it and i can argue but uh, uh, no uh, we must be critical of the fact that our government doesn't seem a clear have a clear dogma about national interests and therefore uh, they are uh, flopping everywhere um, uh, the chinese have occupied our land but we go and meet them uh, there uh, there was a brics meeting which we had in india uh, of course it was online and uh, but we modi appeared with uh, xi jinping now the third thing is we should not uh, take a stand where we become isolated and an unpopular stand today we are isolated uh what happened in the security council uh, we abstained and how many people uh, how many countries abstained uh, china india and uae uae of course you can uh, you know whether they or abstain or side with you it's, it's a small country but we are on the same side as china that means china has shown more independence uh considering its close proximity to russia then uh, india and india has uh, agonized and then it has uh, it has uh, taken a, a stand of uh, of of not uh, voting for either side so i think uh, uh, put together i would say that uh, we need uh, we don't have a national interest uh, based foreign policy in our country today it's a, who receives whom and uh, how they smiled and how they you know went out to protocol or you have a rally in which you say ugly ugly bar kisi ki bar or something whatever and uh, it's not a um, a well structured thing and i would like uh, um, abhijit to tell me whether he views the indian foreign policy today in the same way as an unstructured ad hoc um um set of uh, steps then you you come uh, uh into the situation in ukraine i hardly need say that uh, a country has been uh, invaded and by a much stronger country and uh, the only argument that i have seen them give is uh, that uh, you know they are going to join in, in, in nato but they haven't joined 
So, um, and the Americans have not uh, taken any, it's the Americans are not saying Americans are wooing and these people, uh, Ukraine, you know, is hesitating. No, it's not that. Ukraine is very keen, but the Americans are not. Not so far. Maybe now they will. But the fact is that that can't be a reason. Uh, the all talk of persecution of Russians are all rubbish. To call um, uh, um, uh, the uh, the president uh, of uh, Ukraine as a Nazi, as a, as idiotic because he's a Jew, and his father uh, was in the fight against uh, in the clandestine fight against uh, Hitler in in Germany. So I mean, how can you say all these things? You know, without somebody doing the research and finding out, you're so not saying you're not doing anything. Now suddenly the Russians sent word that they are ready to have talks. The uh, Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, government were in hiding. Uh, they said, no, uh, we don't want to. Then uh, Belarus uh, tried to uh, intervene. And now they are more or less agreed. I don't know whether they're going to go through with this because there may be other nitty gritties to be worked out. But at last, uh, if it's... Um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, talks will take place, but supposing the talks fail, uh, can Abhijit tell us what will be the scenario and what we should be uh, on lookout for? So um, uh, uh, finally, all this that has happened, how does it weigh on India-US relations and how India's uh, China relations, how it's going to be developing in the near future? These are some of the things that we would like to know from you. And then afterwards, we will interact with you. The entire panel that we have will interact with you. Over to you, Abhijit. Sorry. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, so uh, let me start with this one by one. So first is the unstructured foreign policy. On this, I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know, the problem has always been the extreme personalization of Indian foreign policy since Nehru's time. And uh, it remains uh, unchanged. Uh, you know, so you had people like VK Krishna Menon who would keep uh, mouthing off nasty abuses to the Americans, would literally go against the diktat of Nehru and voted for the Russian invasion, the Soviet invasion of Hungary in 56, even though he was instructed to oppose it. Uh, and Nehru would turn a blind eye because uh, uh, Krishna Menon was his favorite. Uh, you, uh, you've had several episodes like this where, you know, po policy has been unnecessarily personalized. I.K. Gujral, for example, would just go around making nasty remarks about Britain when there was absolutely no need to. I mean, they hadn't said anything nasty about you. Why would you say anything nasty about them? Etc., uh, etc. Et I mean, it's such, it's such a long bit. Uh, the second part of it, of course, is the way our uh, uh, foreign ministry is run. Excruciatingly understaffed. There is no through career training, uh, literally nothing. So you have a, uh, a, a very low intake point and the value addition to the service is next to negligible. Uh, so uh, even the analysis that come out of it are extremely, uh, 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 well, let's just say they're about the same quality as a JNU PhD. Uh, th there are, of course, uh, notable exceptions here or there, but those are simply the exceptions that prove the rule. Uh, so, uh, uh, and of course, our uh, uh, beloved and Lord and Master, the Prime Minister, seems to love the Foreign Service over all others. So he's kind of waddling in a sea of mediocrity uh, as his uh, uh, pool of uh, uh, advice goes. So there's nothing much we can do about that except to, you know, see it as we uh, call it. Now, that said, uh, in terms of uh, Ukraine, uh, I would say democracy or no democracy, support to Ukraine uh, should be measured in terms of have they supported us in the past? And I think uh, if you go by Ukraine's voting record in the past and their record in general, it has been an extraordinarily abysmal one. Uh, uh, Ukraine uh, sold Pakistan uh, uh, lethal weapons like the 320 uh, uh, TATU uh, tanks. Uh, they've supplied them with all kinds of lethal machinery. Russia has also supplied Pakistan, but with non-lethal uh, helicopters and jet engines. 
uh, uh, Ukraine was uh, one of the first countries to denounce India after the 1998 uh, uh, nuclear tests. Uh, they have voted against us two or three times. Uh, they have been regularly signatories to uh, uh, several statements uh, 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 from the special representatives and things like that against India. Uh, and mind you, even as we're speaking today, uh, uh, this morning, the uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, permanent representative at the UN issued a threat against uh, Indian students saying that, you know, uh, if you value the safety of your students, you should uh, 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 be voting for us. And within the last hour, we've been getting reports that Indian students were beaten by Ukrainian border police and forced back. And they're being used as hostages uh, 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 in some form or the other. So I don't think supporting Ukraine uh, 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 should be very high up on our uh, priority list, number one. Uh, second is the question of Ukraine's own record in terms of, of the sovereignty of other countries. Uh, we need to look at what the role they played in uh, Syria, uh, but much more specifically, the role they played in Iraq in the 2003 invasion, uh, which they joined quite happily. And that was a completely illegal invasion. Uh, which uh, uh, violated every rule book. In fact, it's uh, it, it's as illegal as, uh, 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 you know, uh, in fact, it's the same legal principle. Preventative war is illegal. Preemptive war is legal. George W. Bush dressed up prevention as preemption. And that's exactly what uh, Putin has done with Ukraine. He's dressed up preventing them from joining NATO as preempting them from joining NATO. And he's literally taken something out of something that Ukraine itself had used to join uh, aggression onto another country. So even in terms of Ukraine's own record with other countries, it's been less than stellar. Third, we need to be very clear that at least since 2014, uh, Ukraine has been a, a less than perfect democracy, which is perfectly fine. No democracy is perfect. But since 2019, when Zelensky took over, uh, he has systematically been putting his opponents in jail. He has been putting newspaper editors in jail. Uh, he has been uh, putting on primary, secondary and tertiary sanctions on anybody who opposes him. Uh, and effectively, what he is, is uh, uh, the fountainhead of a, a, a web of extraordinary corruption. Uh, which uh, uh, of a whole bunch of oligarchs, and it's not very different from the uh, Pakistani Fauji Foundation mentality out here. Uh, because what happens here with Zelensky is that uh, all the business interests are concentrated to his cronies. He he has constantly whittled away the power of the Verkhovna Rata, the uh, parliament, and centralized it to himself. Uh, he refuses to implement the agreements that his own government signed. They signed the Minsk agreement saying that one way out of what happened in Crimea, Luhansk, and Donetsk was to uh, uh, you know, federalize the structure. His government is committed to it. And yet what he has been doing is removing powers, much like Modi, and centralizing it all into themself, uh, uh, onto himself. Uh, and mind you, this was also in opposition to his election promises. If you look at the voting pattern of Ukraine, uh, the east of the Dnieper, which has always been a Russian majority, uh, has tended to voted uh, tended to vote for a pro-Russian candidate, while the uh, west Ukraine, west of the Dnieper has tended to vote uh, for a Ukrainian nationalist. In this election, both banks voted overwhelmingly for Zelensky because he claimed that you know he was going to uh, heal all these old wounds and he was going to enact federalism. His own election promises which he's gone back on. Now, going back on election promises is not a sign of bad democracy. In fact, democracies are known for bad election promises, which uh, people regularly go back on. But jailing opponents, jailing journalists, uh, whittling away the powers of parliament is definitely a sign of uh, 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 turning away from a democracy. So these are all the different reasons why we absolutely should not be supporting Ukraine. Plus, of course, the fact that we depend much more on Russia than we ever will on Ukraine. Next, the uh, part of the unstructured foreign policy, like you said, doctor, the Quad and BRICS, why both? Uh, 
thankfully, I'm happy to announce we're equally useless in both. Uh, we're equally useless in BRICS and we're equally useless in Quad. So Quad is, though they don't claim it's a military alliance, we all know it's a military alliance. The problem, of course, is the other three members, Australia, Japan, and America, their ships can talk to each other seamlessly. They don't even need voice commands. It's all done on computers. You know, it's like pack thinking, like Star Trek cyborgs, They uh, what the Queen Bee thinks, all the others know exactly and they know how to attack. It's like a wolf pack attack tactics. India does not have that systems compatibility. And, you know, in private for the last 10 years, I've been hearing constant complaints about how India refuses to standardize its equipment and, you know, make it intercompatible with uh, 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 the other equipment. So it's it's really something more of a, uh, think of our quad participation more as a Punjabi wedding. It's all about the show and the dhamaka and the bhangra and the uh, uh, barat and things like that than it is about any substance. Because, you know, a great wedding can't ensure, uh, I mean, a great barat and a great band in a wedding can't ensure that the marriage itself is going to be successful. So it's like, you know, Punjabi wedding where too much is spent on the Bharat and not enough is spent on seeing that the uh, uh, bride and groom are compatible. Uh, Bricks is a talk shop. Uh, I think we've all seen that it's been a talk shop since day one. It's fantastic for the five leaders to come together and uh, make pointless hot air statements. But uh, it, it, there's also been a clear uh, warning sign in Bricks. That, you know, Russia comes with a position on the first day and by the third day of every BRICS summit, it's completely mutated and become uh, very similar to the Chinese statement. Um, I think there you're beginning to see very clear divergences between China and Russia on the one hand and India, Brazil and South Africa on the other. But in any case, they're all completely incompatible and they were uh, this entire grouping, which was a, in my opinion, a very foolish grouping, uh, was uh, 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 invented by some economist. Uh, uh, he called it brick, and then you know everybody decided how wonderful, and they decided they needed African representation, so they added the S at the end and added South Africa to it. But like I said, uh, uh, one grouping is useless, and in the other, we are useless in the grouping. In both cases, it's actually India is useless in the uh, 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 grouping. Uh, so uh, this brings me to the next question you asked, Doctor, which is. You know, the, uh, 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 the isolation that India faces in terms of uh, 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 its decision at the UN Security Council, uh, the legality of the invasion, the Nazi bit and uh, the future of talks. Uh, I don't think from everything that I'm hearing, even from D.C., uh, because the United States came out and made a clear statement saying, look, we don't expect you to vote with us, but we do expect you to use whatever... Uh, uh, means, resources, and faculties you have with Putin to talk, intercede, and try to bring an end to this. Uh, and mind you, most of the people I talk to in Pentagon anyway have a very low opinion of India's diplomatic uh, capabilities anyway. Those same people curiously come on TV uh, every fortnight and say lovely things about India. Sadly, <laughs> in private conversations, they say exactly the opposite things about India that you know, look, uh, we value your diplomatic cooperation as much as we value, say, Mauritius or Seychelles, nothing more than that. Uh, so, uh, so you know, I mean, nobody really cares about the diplomatic stance of an ant. Uh, uh, so that, unfortunately, is what's happening out there. Um, uh, there's, there's a huge dichotomy between what Western think tankers see and what it seems to me that their governments see. Uh, because I've also been talking to the French and the Germans and they're like, uh, we don't even care about what happened. And the Americans are like, look, it's fine. We understand. Now do something constructive. They, they don't like to create problems. They like solving problems. Unlike our bureaucrats and diplomats, since you know my mother very well, loves putting up obstacles and uh, 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 everything. <laughs> Unlike the IAS, IFS combined, um, those guys, uh, you know, they prefer solving, uh, uh, ish mostly they prefer solving uh, uh, things. Uh, as for the legality of the invasion, the problem with the legality of the invasion is, uh, I personally believe it's completely illegal and technically it is. Uh, the problem is that the precedent that the US itself has set uh, in terms of blatantly illegal uh, 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 issues. Number one uh, was the bombing of uh, the Bosnian Serbs because of horrific human rights atrocities. 
Uh, and they said, you know, uh, after everything was sorted out, after the Srebrenica massacre, the bombing started, uh, the Bosnian Serbs were uh, bombed into submission. Uh, NATO said, look, you can't become a separate country. You can't join Serbia. You have to remain this conglomerated state, this federalist state. But then when the same thing happens in Kosovo, they go in without a UN resolution uh, under the principle of humanitarian intervention, which is a legal principle, but it isn't an enacted legal principle by the UN. And even assume it is legal, assume for a minute that it was perfectly legal, that the intervention was legal. Separating it from Serbia and violating Serbia's territorial integrity, I have seen no rule of humanitarian intervention that allowed that to happen. And yet they did it. They also recognized Kosovo, which is what Putin initially did with Donetsk and Lugansk. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, 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 highly debatable. Next, of course, was the Iraq invasion, which we've already spoken about. Uh, prevention dressed up as a uh, preemption. And the third, and for, to discuss the third, I have to discuss the uh, uh, slight history, uh, which is that, you know, the Russians now claim that they had verbal assurances, that Gorbachev got verbal assurances that uh, 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 NATO would not expand east. Uh, and every time they bring that up, the Americans say, where's the paper? Show us the paper where we ever said uh, we will not expand east. Which brings us to the third point, which is uh, Libya. The UN Security Council resolution on Libya was very clear. It said you will ensure a ceasefire. But that is not what America, France, and Britain did. They did not ensure a ceasefire. They ensured full-fledged regime change. And when the Russians asked them, hey, this is a resolution for ceasefire, not for regime change, they said, well, it was impractical. Therefore, we had to improvise. And anyway, we had a wink-wink, nudge-nudge agreement. So, you know, your verbal assurances are not verbal assurances. My verbal assurances are uh, cast iron guarantees. Clearly, that can't work. So they have a history of bad diplomatic bad faith. They have a history of violating international laws prolifically, systematically, repeatedly, decade after decade since uh, the end of the Cold War. Uh, so even legally, uh, you know, there, there, there's a, a case of equivalence to be made here. As for uh, 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 Zelensky uh, uh, ca calling him a Nazi, uh, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. He may be a Jew. Uh, but I would remind you, there were 40 Jewish officers in the Finnish army that served directly under SS command, uh, all of whom were uh, awarded iron crosses. Now, uh, it's, uh, uh, they all refused it to a man, you, you know, because ultimately they were like, I'm a Jew. You're a Nazi. You're killing my people. Thank you. I don't want your reward. Uh, the problem is something very similar out here. Zelensky may be a Jew. His parents may have been executed by the SS. The problem is he heads a coalition which has extreme right-wing elements in it who, who support, celebrate uh, Stepan Bandera as the head of the nation. Stepan Bandera was a Schutzstaffel, an SS Waffen executioner, who was used by the Nazis as a uh, uh, Jew hunter, so to say, uh, and a Russian hunter. And he would go round them up for uh, uh, transportation to concentration camps or just engage in mass executions even more problematic than Stepan Bandera, because you can argue Stepan Bandera is just a symbol and it's some way of connecting it to the past. It's Say it's like uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, for example. Subhash Chandra Bose did not commit war atrocities like Stepan Bandera did. Stepan Bandera got his own hands dirty. But there is a much more problematic issue of the Azov Battalion. And the Azov Battalion is basically this... Uh, 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 it, it models itself on the SS. Its logo is a mangling of the SS logo. Uh, somewhere between, te depending on who you read, between nine, ten to 13,000 people uh, who uh, uh, militia, armed, violent militia, uh, white supremacist, openly Nazi, who give the Nazi salute, uh, who believe that the Germans did the right thing to the Russians, who were absorbed into the regular units of the uh, 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 Ukrainian military. So there is a very, and there is a very, very serious revival of Nazi movements uh, uh, glorifying Hitler and glorifying the Nazis west of Ukraine, uh, in Western Ukraine, that's west of the deeper, which uh, Zelensky has never condemned, which he has accepted as uh, part and parcel of his 
coalition. Uh, and he has not only uh, 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 not condemned them, he's never acted against them. He has never tried to tamper them down. He has never even tried to tamper any of the things they display because it suits his narrative perfectly well. He uses them as and when required. So I would say that Zelensky may uh, by birth be a Jew, but uh, in private, he's uh, in policy, in practice, he's more than happy to use any, uh, uh, including Nazi movements, uh, to further his political career. Uh, On to the talks now, I think Zelensky really has uh, not many options left. Uh, so yes, I do re remember, I predicted that by uh, 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 Friday, Russian troops will be in Kiev. Uh, Russian troops were in Kiev on Friday. Uh, yeah, they haven't managed not. to take Kiev yet. Yeah, uh, because they are uh, now bringing in the heavy troops. So far, uh, all they brought in was the light armor. Now they're bringing in all the infantry and the heavy armor out there. Uh, Ukraine simply can't hold out. Uh, is it going to be extremely bloody and nasty? Yes. Uh, but there is no way that these people can hold out. Uh, also, this particular invasion has been much, much more rapid than Hitler's invasion of Ukraine under Operation Barbarossa. It's been much more rapid than the American invasion of Iraq uh, uh, under uh, 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 in 2003. Uh, it's been, by all estimates, quite a spectacular success. Is the resistance strong? Yes. The issue always comes down to how does a country, you can be extremely valiant. Uh, val the, the, the valiance and the bravery of the Ukrainian soldier is not in question. Uh, but uh, uh, definitely, it, it's it, it, it's glorious futility. I think all heroes should be saluted, uh, but in this case, it's uh, I, I can only think that this resistance is going to get into uh, possibly an insurgency phase after. Uh, uh, the Russian takeover, which is imminent, even if it takes three, four months, this is now a situation from which uh, 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 Putin simply will not withdraw. Uh, if he does withdraw, it will be because of the peace talks happening right now, which is uh, number one, for Ukraine to accept all the land seizures of Russia as legal and hand it over legally to Russia, not stake any claim to it. Two, to uh, demilitarize and uh, promise never to join NATO. I think the longer the talks go on, the more Putin's demands are going to keep getting maximalist. Uh, and I suspect uh, it's going to get a lot nastier. One of the, the main reason that they've not been able to get into uh, capture Kiev full time is because they're going out of their way to prevent civilian casualties. The Ukrainians, on the other hand, are doing everything to maximize civilian casualties. If you remember Shivaji, who knew exactly how Aurangzeb was, never subjected his population to the tortures and depredations of Aurangzeb. He fought a guerrilla warfare entirely from the countryside. Zelensky wants to use his people as human shields. He's basically waiting for them, uh, waiting for the Russians in the cities, in the hope the Russians will come in and kill as many people as possible and score uh, a huge uh, 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 PR points. I think that's a particularly cynical man, and I think it's absolutely despicable using your own population as human shields. Uh, it's a different argument that you're desperate and you're willing to do anything, but uh, you know this is uh, these are the kind of tactics you expect from jihadis in Iraq, uh, jihadis in Chechnya. Uh, you don't expect this from an army that doesn't care about its own people and wants to expose its own people to uh, uh, damage. Uh, I suspect uh, the talks, maybe the first few rounds will fail and the nastier it gets, uh, possibly the greater chances of success. And finally, your last question, Dr. Swami, on India-China relations. The problem with the sanctions right now is that... Uh, it's pushed Russia irrevocably into Chinese orbit. And for us who are a continental power, we're not an offshore balancer. Uh, that's our nightmare come true. It's Russia so completely dependent on China today that we're look 
acting at complete and total encirclement. Uh, 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 China to the east, Russia and Russia's puppets to the north, uh, Chinese puppet to our west, uh, Chinese dependencies to our south and southeast and uh, in the ocean below us. For us, uh, this, this may be good or bad for Russia, I don't care. I'm only concerned about what's good for India. But for us, it is a nightmare come true. You're, you're finished? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I ask my colleagues to uh, uh, give their points of view, um, I'm, I'm glad that you frankly and honestly uh, put your point of view. But essentially, we are. I don't want to discuss what is a true democracy, what is a fake democracy, and who's despicable, who's not despicable. Uh, we're going by the rule of law. There's the United Nations. There are certain uh, the United Nations as a charter. And so in that context, uh, it's undeniable that the Russians have unilaterally entered what is a United Nations country, namely uh, Ukraine, and uh, are in the process of taking it over forcibly. Second, you see, on the, uh, the point about uh, Ukraine, um, you know, not supporting India, I would like to point out to you that the United States seventh, uh, sent the seventh fleet when we were fighting the Bangladesh war. I mean, a, a task force of the, uh, of the seventh fleet. And did we, uh, uh, after that, uh, you know, uh, treat America like a prior pariah? On the contrary, Within two years, uh, I mean, Mrs. Gandhi was uh, Mrs. Gandhi was inviting uh, Kissinger to come to India. So the, this is uh, the, I, I would rather go on the issues of principles right now. I mean, all your facts and all. I don't want to contest it just now uh, because uh, I'm not as knowledgeable as you, and neither, you know, as my wife jokingly says, you never heard, never said, uttered a word about of uh, about uh, Ukraine all these years I've known you and suddenly you're talking about on television about Ukraine where did you get all this expertise and interest I'm, I'm not a scholar of Ukraine but I am only on a simple point Russia is not a democracy it's a dictatorship <clears throat> by all accounts perfect or imperfect Ukraine is a democracy and uh, it is a recognized uh, country, um, a legitimate country, according to the United Nations. And the Russians have tried to, uh, have entered and tried to take it over. <clears throat> now, uh, let me also say that <clears throat> many of the things that are said about, uh, it's a, not an important point, but I need to put it in, uh, about Ukraine doing with India, it condemned India as a nuclear test. I have some found no records of it. It doesn't matter even if they did, because the United States also condemned our, you know, uh, our uh, nuclear test. So, um, uh, but, uh, you know, the uh, how a country has behaved with us, if we go by that, I don't think there's any country with which uh, who, with which we can some, some, uh, sympathize because whenever we have taken an independent stand, some other country gets upset about it. And uh, to, uh, we were uh, bhai bhai with China, then uh, we broke with them, then again we made up with them, and again now they have uh, come. So it's a, uh, 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 I, I would rather go into this uh, core question again after uh, all my colleagues have asked you questions. Uh, do you think that whatever may be these shortfalls of, uh, of the leadership of Ukraine, Russia was justified because in effect uh, from your, the, the sum total of what I heard from you was that you appear to justify or at least uh, restrain us all from condemning Russia for what they have done. But in fact, in my opinion, we should condemn them because they have taken law into their own hands. They are veto-holding power uh, um, uh, in the UN Security Council. 
which is there for ensuring. And you know, you talk about BRICS. BRICS Delhi, uh, uh, you know, uh, statement. You uh, please see what they have said that no country should take the law into its own hands. Everything should be done by discussion or with reference to the United Nations. Uh, I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've uh, written an op-ed for a newspaper. If it gets published, I'll send it to you. Where I've given the pa the paragraph and the page numbers of the uh, <clears throat> the statement made by Putin, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, um, and Narendra Modi, and that's the the, the Delhi Delhi uh, meeting, where it clearly condemns any country crossing anybody's boundary and trying to change the uh, the uh, government there by force. So I'm on, only on that point, and I'm saying that India should have taken a strong stand. That yes, uh, we have lots of reservations about um, of Ukraine, but this is a violation of the UN Charter, and therefore we will vote with the Americans, who have got lots of minus points. I have, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I know about it. It's, uh, it's all known how Americans. Uh, tailor their arguments according to their needs. But the fact is that all said and done, uh, America is a democratic country. And I will say, I'll criticize the Americans, but I will say that my leaning will be to the Americans in any dispute for the purpose that they're a democratic country and we can bring about leadership change through opinion change uh, in such countries uh, as opposed to dictatorships in other countries. This is my uh, broad point about uh, your scholarship, your deep research, everything has come out. I'm impressed with it, but I'm sorry you're on the other side. So I have to uh, disagree with you. Okay, Jagdish and uh, Arvind, uh, what you have to, uh, you please now say what you what you feel like. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, perhaps, uh, uh, Arvind, let perhaps Abhijit respond to what Dr. Swami's comment okay, so that okay, it becomes okay. much easier. Then we can uh, have the discussion further. Uh, thank you. So, you know, for me, uh, the uh, uh, lesson on principles is from Cardinal Richelieu. Uh, you know, when uh, somebody uh, asked him, uh, Sir, you're a man of God, have you no principles? He said, uh, sir, I uh, personally, I may have principles. When it comes to the state, I neither have shame nor principles. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, I uh, being a great uh, admirer of both Cardinals Richelieu and Mazarin, I uh, tend to be uh, belong to that particular school of thought. Is it aggression? Unequivocally, undeniably, with absolutely no caveats, what Russia has done is outright, blatant, illegal aggression. <laughs> now, will I say that if I was the Indian UN permanent representative? Absolutely not. Uh, because uh, it, it's not just what Ukraine has done to us. It's also been our record in the past when America invaded Iraq. Uh, we didn't condemn the Americans. We made the exact state, uh, exact same statement uh, that was made uh, uh, this morning uh, in the UN Security Council. We, uh, we urged talks. We urged, uh, you know, a return to the table, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, we are doing what a weak power should do. Uh, you know, this is ultimately we have to accept that what Thucydides wrote in the Melian Dialogues, two thousand five hundred years back is still applicable. The strong do what the uh, 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 what they must. Uh, the strong do what they do and the weak must endure what they must. And uh, weak countries like India should uh, pretty much, uh, uh, you know, um, stay in our okat, uh, so to say. So we've done, I think, the best that we could do. I think it's realistic. It may be not be optimal. It may be completely. I'm the first person to admit that it is totally unprincipled. I'm a completely unprincipled chap myself, so I certainly shouldn't be uh, 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 preaching principles to other people. But uh, I think it was the most realistic thing we could have done under the circumstances. Um, as for rapprochement with Ukraine, I agree with you completely. 
uh, uh, why uh, that far back even? Saudi Arabia has done what not manner of wrong to us. And today we are completely buddy-buddy, chummy-chummy with uh, Mohammed bin Salman. The point is Mohammed bin Salman reached out to us and we kissed, hugged and made up proverbially. The Ukrainians have never done that. Therein lies the problem. Today, they suddenly realize there's a country called India, which is all kissy kissy, touchy touchy, feely feely with uh, Putin. And they suddenly realize that they want our help. And they have taken hostile actions as of this very day. They have lati charged Indian students, they have held them hostage, and they made it quite clear to us that they're holding them hostage. I certainly just, don't. Just, think one, just one interruption. I have not seen this anywhere. Is it in the, any of the newspapers today? Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's been reported across all the news channels now in the last uh, hour, two hours or so. Oh, the television. Uh, the, the Ukraine. I, I've been talking to a lot of students in Ukraine because uh, they reached out to me on Twitter. And we've been trying to help them. You know, it, it's very uncoordinated. So we're trying to talk to the MEA, getting them to talk to these guys, providing them with numbers. The problem again is that, you know, uh, 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 there's so many students calling that those numbers aren't getting through and then they're calling me and they're calling other people to, uh, uh, we've got a support group set up. In anyway, that let me do the research and get back to you privately. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so to answer very simply, was Russia justified? Absolutely not. Blatantly illegal, uh, shameful. Uh, uh, as a human being, I condemn it. Uh, as a policy analyst, I condemn it. But as a loyal subject of India, if I were ever in the unlikely situation to represent my country, I would uh, be as obtuse and uh, nebulous and ambiguous as our permanent representative for the UN was. Well, you qualify then to be... A... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I just, just one thing, uh, one short uh, uh, smart aleck remark from you. I mean, I, I like it. We voted for Hamas. Should the Israelis have uh, broken with us? So the Israelis uh, in private, they make a distinction between the operative resolutions and the non-operative resolutions. <laughs> the non-operative resolutions, they say you do what you want. But the operative resolutions, which actually have consequences... Uh, they don't mind however many times you vote against them on words. But when there's actions involved, they're like, no. And we tend to follow that pattern. But, but personally, that's, what, if, that's yeah. what we should follow with the uh, Ukraine too. <laughs> yes, but uh, then, 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 then no value to us. <laughs> but they extending the same <laughs> true, but extending the same principle, Israel is also sitting on occupied territory for the last. 50 yeah. years. So we should also yeah, take the I don't know. That's, a, that's a debatable question. We'll uh, deal that separately in another discussion. Okay, yeah. well, uh, Arvind and, uh, um, and uh, um, um, anybody else besides? Uh, yeah, Jagdish will join. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, is, uh, yeah I, 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 I find that in these two conflicting views of Dr. Swami and Vijit on this issue, both of them are right. <laughs> Dr. Swami, in fact, uh, uh, Vijit is also agreed with Dr. Swami's Doctor, assessment. You, you should nominate Dr. Arvind Chaturvedi to become India's permanent representative. Yeah. <laughs> you see, he will do a very good job. Yeah. Okay, Abhijit, Abhijit you nice. just now agreed, <laughs> agreed with Dr. Swami's view or assessment that Russia is an aggressor. And Russia has been a friend also. I also agree with you, Abhijit, 100% that Ukraine, Ukraine has never been our friend. Whether you talk about UNO, whether you talk about helping Pakistan with tanks or uh, uh, arms or, uh, or uh, stand on Kashmir. Even on 370, uh, what was Ukraine's stand? And now, and suddenly, what you said in the last, that suddenly Ukraine has realized that India is there and help should be sought. This conflict between Ukraine and Russia was going on for months together. Never once had 
Ukraine approached India that will you you are such a big power will you help us in re resolving this dispute? Never. After Russia uh, uh, reached Kiev and uh, attacked uh, these uh, points, then only Ukraine has realized that India is there and and they're praising Modi to sky high and that you can do it only you can do it and all that. And very interestingly, we have a Vishu Guru as Prime Minister. Vishu Guru is Narendra Modi ji, and Narendra Modi ji has taken that Vishu Guru stand. Vishuguru means both the chelas are there for uh, Russia is also a chela of Vishuguru. Ukraine is also approaching Vishuguru for a settlement or uh, 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 help. And therefore, Vishuguru has taken a neutral. Both of you should stop. Don't fight. So he has taken this, this stand of a schoolmaster when two children in the classroom are fighting and he is stopping both of them. So uh, I, I tend to agree for majority of the Indians. Uh, a neutral point. Of course, uh, they say in Mahabharata also, uh, 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 neutral stand was taken. And our Hindi poet Ramdhari Dinkar has said, the summer says, hai nahi paap ka bhagi keval vyad, aur jo tatast hai, samay likhega, unka bhi aparad. This tatast, <laughs> the neutral stand has never been appreciated. But Vishuguru, if a Vishuguru takes a neutral stand, um, we must appreciate and putting the views of Dr. Swami and Abhijit together, I think uh, both of them are right. And if both of them are right, then Vishuguru is also right. <laughs> and since he has taken a neutral stand and he has spoken to Putin, yesterday he also spoke to the Ukraine. Yeah, but, but, uh, but, but, yeah. but what he says, he spoke to... No, no, just one interruption. What he says, he spoke according to our government, uh, is not what Putin has put out as what he spoke with the... Um, uh, have we compared the two uh, speeches? You I must think, have seen I think it. that's a failure of the uh, diplomats on both sides. <laughs> no, no. But what you should should say, Vishu Guru can diplomat. never be wrong. What? Vishu Guru can what? never be wrong. And PMO <laughs> can never be wrong. The okay. diplomats on two sides. Diplomats on two sides, in fact, they have failed uh, to come out with a uh, <laughs> uniform uh, statement uh, of the <laughs> talks between the Indian yeah. Prime Minister and uh, Putin. Okay. So I think I agree with uh, Dr. Swami. Everybody would agree that Russia is an aggressor. United Nations member uh, Ukraine has been uh, attacked uh, unilaterally, violating BRICS agreement and so many others. So therefore, Russia is an aggressor. And Ukraine has never been a friend, uh, as uh, Vijay says. I 100% uh, agree with him. And therefore, I support the stand taken by my Vishu Guru, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of being neutral. Jagdish. My question, my question is to Abhijit and Dr. Swami. Uh, there are a lot of students who are stranded in, U uh, in Ukraine, and we are all hearing about it. Everybody is concerned, and there are a lot of viewers watching our program to get some idea what is going to happen. So I want to know from Dr. Swami as a uh, uh, politician and as a senior statesman and also from Abhijit, what do you think will happen regarding the students' future in the next few days? There are some students who are coming some uh, from border areas and as you just said, there were some attacks or lati charge on students of Indian origin. So I want to know from you because a lot of parents are concerned about the fate of their students who are returning. They want them safe back. So I want to know, I'll go into the other issues afterwards, my next question. But on the students issue, what do you think could happen in the next few uh, days? First with Abhijit and then Dr. Swami. Okay. Uh, just quick uh, for response first to Dr. Chaturvedi. So, so Dr. Chaturvedi, you and Jagdish have known me as long as Dr. Swami has known me, which is for the last 30 years. And I think you've both had a lunch at my house where you've seen I have been arguing with Dr. Swami for the last 30 years, disagreeing with him because in those days I used to be a rabid communist. I was more to the left of Shaila Rashid and Umar Khalid and uh, 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 I was to the left of Sitaram Yachuri. In fact, Sitaram Yachuri used to look like a capitalist <laughs> pig compared to me. So, you know, uh, 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 in fact, I used to keep denouncing the CPIM and CPIA uh, uh, ML 
for uh, you know uh, revisionism and bourgeoisism and things like that and i was the only repository of genuine communist thought till dr swami kind of uh, that that's why he's my guru because he allows these open purva pakshas to happen where you know it's the argument that comes about it's the argument that shines through and he managed to de brainwash me my mom tried she failed dr swami finally succeeded because she wasn't as dr swami says a jewish mother uh, <laughs> to you know de deprogram me de communize me in that sense but to answer your specific question jagdish uh it's um uh, it's a bit difficult to say uh the people who are being allowed to go across the border will be brought back from poland slovakia hungary and romania depending on which border they are i think right now all the uh uh, uh aid efforts are being concentrated in slovakia uh where there all the students are being evacuated onto into a connection point and then being taken out i know for a fact i've spoken to several of the embassy uh folks on the slovak and uh, polish and hungarian borders they're saying that all the uh, uh, requirements for visa vaccination and things have been uh, uh, lifted by the authorities in those countries they're being provided temporary entry permits they're taken in buses straight to the airport and ferried back to india uh, what has happened since then however uh, for the last 2 uh, 3 hours that we know of is this lati charge on indian students uh, that's happened at two three different places uh, and uh, uh, on on different countries borders but by ukrainians uh, and they don't know what's happening i think it's going to take at least about 8 9 hours for us to get some clarity on what exactly is happening because all the students have been telling me the exact same thing i initially saw it on twitter and then i checked my whatsapp groups and things and i'd had lots of missed calls so i haven't spoken to them yet but i'm getting lots of panicked calls from these people i i would really want to see what ukraine does about it because i think ukraine holding indian students hostage isn't going to go down very well for their uh, pr at the moment the pr is the only thing they have happening for them right now uh let's see i think uh, i'm hopeful that uh, uh, we can at least get some international pressure on to them to release those indian students Uh, let me just add to what abhijit has said in fact the future of the indian student is more uh, questionable see what happens if india the stand visa be ukraine remains what it is today that is not condemning russia not helping ukraine then what is the fate of these 20000 student even if they are evacuated and come back to india when they go to complete their course because most of them are second year third year students when they go back what will happen how ukraine is going to treat them and how the universities are going to treat them because when india had actually issued an advisory about a month back that those students who want to come back feel safe they should come back none of them uh, opted for coming back to india at that time and in fact they were demanding from the universities that the online classes should be arranged when they go back to india universities had refused to arrange online classes that was the thing so they said no you stay here we will not have any online classes in india that is Nein, now what will happen even after peace peace uh, returns what is going to happen to these students there no no before abhijit responds to it arvin please try to understand the mentality of the I parents understand. and students sure, it is sure, very easy sure. for us to say that an advisory was issued but everybody was hopeful till the last moment and students and their parents have invested a huge amount of money we have to see yes. all these factors we say that just because because there are a lot of vishwa guru vishwa gurus bugs spreading that advisory was issued they should have come back this is not the way that vishwa gurus bugs should spread this type of messages our fellow <laughs> citizens and students are in a crisis advisory may may have been issued but they want to come out from there now that the war has broken out and it's also a question of uh, these students could have if they could have afforded the fees in india they would have not gone to ukraine and this is yeah. the condition of numerous other countries around the world so just an advisory or doing an online or offline thing is not an immediate solution the safety of right. those students coming back to india is paramount according to me 
definitely no, they I'm, I'm only I'm, I'm only supplementing your concern i'm only supplementing yeah, your yeah, concern thank you, thank you. But it is not only on it not only concerned for the parents today but even tomorrow this concern will be even bigger that's what i'm saying yeah i'm not uh, denying it just just yeah. one request if uh, uh just is this just a request if everybody could please refrain from using a vishwaguru to vasudeva kutumbakam and three atmanirbhar bharat because i get uncontrollable fits of laughter every time somebody says that so you know uh, the next time i turn my camera off it's because one of you have used that word and i'm laughing my head off <laughs> thank you okay. i i have another uh, political or a diplomatic type of question now that uh, we all say yes uh, russia has uh, gone in it was wrong error all that but what i want to know is ultimately if all these super powers try to behave in this manner and there is a failure of the united nation forget a veto holding power invades a neighboring country then what is the future of un correct what is the future of the world order tomorrow anything could happen to any other small country how do we then decide what is fair and not fair then there is no meaning of the united nation i want dr swami and abhijit to tell us because if they have done aggression they have invaded a small country whatever may be the issue a united nation is there veto powers are there so what happens then to other countries what example is the united nation setting in the world order abhijit and then dr swami well the united nations is setting the example it's always set which is there's very little it can actually do uh, there's a reason most wars that happen happen outside of the un mandate unfortunately that's the reality of it but look it was always invented as a check and balance it's not perfect but it's better than the worst which is not having a un at all uh unfortunately this is the reality i think if you have a uh, change in the structure of the un security council to be more representative of different points of view uh that could be a solution to this but till then the un really has uh, i i think the un's getting more and more irrelevant by the day because it wasn't built for the information age it was built for a much more innocent time well uh shall i intervene yeah dr swami uh first of all uh, uh the un uh, is not as hopeless as uh, abhijit has made out uh the un security council uh is can be superseded by a general assembly vote and in that uh, i'm 100% certain that russia will lose badly russia was going to lose anyway in security council also and uh, and uh, the veto saved it otherwise only three people uh, abstained uh russia was uh, one on on uh, one side and of course uh, uh, some of these uh, um, uh, pro communist countries were also on them there's a small number that voted for russia a huge i think it's four fifths of the security council membership voted uh, against russia so anyway we uh, will the matter will get settled in the general assembly which will probably take another two weeks three weeks see the second thing is um uh, when i asked uh, uh, abhijit how do you explain uh, israel's reaction when uh, you know, india was voted with hamas not once but uh, you know they voted uh, not hamas but they voted for that palestinian whatever administrative body is there in gaza uh, in earlier occasions also and he said no they, they the israelis have this operative and were non operative um, uh, uh whatever he said there's a distinction on which they will react and there's a distinction on which they will not react i say the same thing you should do with uh, with uh, ukraine i mean they criticize your atom bomb all right to help with you uh, america also criticized us uh they um, 
uh, as far as beating up the students is concerned, I'll have to check up. I'll, uh, I'll have uh, the Ukraine ambassador uh, telephone and ask him uh, whether this is uh, so. He just tell me in which media it has appeared so that I can refer it to him. But I would say, I don't know what the exact situation is. Just because you're an Indian student doesn't mean you can't, you don't have to obey law and order. I don't know what the real problem was. I, I mean, I'm not even hinting at it. I say that I will ask the, the Ukraine embassy about the facts. But the fact is, why don't you see how difficult you have made for people to live? Today, you privatized Air India. It is charging one and a half lakhs or 1.6 lakhs for you to fly from there. And people are saying, how are you going to afford this? And then we have to pay another 1.6 lakhs to go back. Uh, so um, where is the government of India's uh, arrangement? I had, I had said, if you remember, I said, I have no, I'm not, I'm a private enterprise man, but I'm opposing the, the um, uh, disinvestment in Air India because it serves a public purpose. It's always available. And if it was an Indian airline, we would have um, uh, India government owned airline today, we would have brought them all free. And so, therefore, I, I, I would say the, the fear for the students is genuine. And I agree with Jagdish, the parents, you know, they don't, they don't want any fine logic, uh, law, uh, law points and so on. They just want to know whether the children are going to be safe. So uh, what, uh, what I think the issue is, I think we should, when we, when we end, end this uh, session, and we may have one more session after, say, maybe 10 days to see how wrong and um, Abhijit has been. <laughs> Sorry, that uh, don't mind that jive. No, no, no. I have, I have egg all over my face because I predicted about five, six days back that there will be absolutely no invasion. Based on what all my friends in the Kremlin were telling and me. And then you said so, it will be all be over in uh, one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, not one day. It was about two, three days. But uh, okay. uh, my, my face, I, I fully accept that my face is stained black with shame. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> I would say India should make more friends. This is the time to make a friend. Now, if uh, later on... Uh, the the uh, Euro, uh, Ukrainians are not grateful. Well, I mean, we still have the same alternatives. In the event we take a stand today, we will get the reputation of being a truly independent country. Today, we are, you know, there are all kinds of rumors floating around. That commission was paid in uh, S-400. And there's therefore some delicacy on opposing uh, Russia. I'm not saying that they're, they're true, but I've heard it from very, very, very responsible people in the government that you can't uh, go against the Russians. Uh, in Indira in Gandhi's time, it was very, very clear. Do you know that Putin, when he came to India, in, uh, uh, when Sonia Gandhi went to Russia as a head of the uh, whatever advisory council and all, she had a minister rank position in Manmohan Singh's government. She went to Russia. Putin personally escorted her. To where Vladimir, Putin's first name is also Vladimir. Vladimir is a town near St. Petersburg. There, Sonia Gandhi's father was kept as a prisoner of war because he was a soldier in Hitler's army. And Putin jokingly said, she and I come from the same school. What same school? How possible? Of course, he was KGB and maybe she is also KGB. I don't know. But the fact is, that I think we, it's, uh, it's by no means a pro-communist country. Uh, um, the, it has elections. People have won and lost. Um, there was a case where they, they had to drive somebody out because he was gerrymandering. But a democratic country misbehaving with us is not an issue in the larger interest of getting one more friend. It is possible that they will become friends because we, we, we are a friend in need and we should uh, take the necessary steps, forgetting all these things, even if they are true, 
to see that we are on the side of democracy because it is a fight between dictatorship and democracy. Okay, then we had a long session. Dr. Sami, I have a yes. question, just a small question. Uh, huh. What about trade from India, I mean, trade between India and Russia and trade between India and Ukraine? India and Ukraine, we have trade of uh, almost uh, $3 billion and uh, with, with Russia, maybe about four times that, maybe $13 billion. Well, maybe. In this conflict, Russia and Ukraine, the trade will also be affected, the import will also be affected, exports will also be affected. So how do we look at this? No, no. Trade with uh, Ukraine and trade with Russia, there's no clash. We are an independent country. We are still trading with China, by the way. <laughs> it's, a, it's the yes. uh, exactly. largest it increase, increase yeah. by increase? 50% in last two years. Yeah. If you have no shame there, why should you have shame here? <laughs> Arvind, we have... Arvind, you can wind up. Yeah, we have ah. really crossed that. Uh, we have crossed uh, yeah, about an hour and uh, 70 minutes, in fact. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Avijit. You, uh, as Dr. Swami has uh, praised you in the very beginning, your uh, uh, outlook on international issues is so clear. Of course, it, uh, today it was in conflict with Dr. Swami, very strong conflict with Dr. Swami. In not, fact, not diagonally the opposed. It's not diagonally the first time. Uh, But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in words of wisdom, Gyan Ganga program, we respect all the views. In fact, our, our our attempt is to provide this platform for the viewers to know where do we stand and where do our interests stand. In fact, today we were discussing India's point of view uh, in this uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia conflict. And uh, both of you, Dr. Swami and uh, Abhijit Ayer Mitra, have provided a very, very clear vision, whatever you think. And of course, viewers will judge. Uh, some some of you agree. Some of the viewers may agree with Abhijit. In fact, uh, when I was reading the comments, a large number of viewers had shown uh, uh, appreciation to what Abhijit has said. And uh, Dr. Swami has said in the beginning, which is the universal truth as if now, that Russia is an aggressor, come what may. And uh, the, therefore, there's nothing wrong in uh, my saying that both of you are right today. And thank you very much for sparing time. Uh, thank you, Jagdish. Thanks the, the technical team led by Ashish Shetty, uh, Tejas, Swaminathan, Gadgi Rakesh, Ishwar Ayer, Vishal Mehta, and Ajesh Nair, without whose support this program would not have been possible. And as Jagdish said in the beginning, we have crossed 96,000 even for the last week's program. And this number keeps on growing because these videos are available on YouTube and several other platforms, which can be viewed later on. Thank you very much, viewers, for your support. We'll be meeting next Sunday again with a new topic, Dr. Subramanian Swami and a new speaker. And this issue is not going to die down soon. Maybe we'll also have an update later on. So see you uh, next Sunday, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time in words of wisdom, Gan Ganga. Till then, Namaskar, Jai Hind.